Coming up on this week's news, the government is set to unveil huge grants for solar and battery installs for all households in a major boost to the trade. The news comes as a whistleblower exposes the shocking standards of some publicly funded PV jobs, and a tradesman is awarded over £1 million after striking a cable at a UK branch of Taco Bell. Welcome to Electrical News Weekly in association with SunGrow, making every watt count literally since 1997. Whether you're listening in the van, on site, or down at the wholesale counter, I'm Joe Robinson, and I've been through the best of the electrical industry news to save you the trouble. We're being lit by Flex 7 with their lightning fast pre wired modular lighting connection system that keeps your installation times razor sharp and this week's challenge word competition is supported by the good people at brady if you need a label they've got a printer and so much more if you think you've spotted the two words that i've been challenged to slip into this week's show comment with them below for the chance to win a prize and while you're there click the links to check out what our sponsors offer The government is set to unveil a major incentive package for solar and battery installations. It's believed that some £13 billion has been earmarked to turbocharge the adoption of combined systems over the next four years. And the cash will be available to everyone, not just low-income households eligible for warm home grants. The government is also talking to banks and energy companies about financing schemes which could eliminate upfront costs. It's also expected that the government will lift its ban on so-called plug-in solar panels. It wants to see them for sale in supermarkets. The plug-in units typically sit in gardens and on rooftops and balconies. They cost between £180 and £300 but can save most of that cost in lower bills in the first year alone. Ministers have been struck by the unit's success in Germany where they're now present in one million homes. Taken together, the measures represent the biggest boost for renewables in years. However, the surge in solar has fuelled fears that installation standards could fall if carried out by flummoxed contractors. Only this week, a whistleblower in the West Country exposed the faults on grant-funded jobs in Cornwall. The anonymous informer says the scale of the issues could undermine climate goals and leave low-income residents financially exposed. They released images showing poorly executed roof works, including slates cut away incorrectly, flashing left unsecured, and a lack of clips or nails to hold fragile slate tiles in place. These faults, the whistleblower says, can allow slates to lift in winter gales, creating a real risk of water ingress, particularly in older homes without modern membrane linings. Another concern involves the structural stability of the panels themselves. Some bracket clamps were found slipping, causing panels to shift apart and creating the possibility that sections could lift off in bad weather. These problems are exacerbated by the complex chain of contractors used in grant-funded schemes. Councils typically appoint main management firms who then subcontract the work, sometimes to secondary contractors working under tight time pressures. A typical installation, they say, is completed in just four hours, compared with two to three days for a privately contracted job. For its part, Cornwall Council says the schemes it oversaw had robust quality assurance checks. Out of more than 439 homes receiving solar jobs under the Sustainable Warmth and Home Upgrade Grant, only two complaints were received and both were resolved. And the increase in solar projects means an increase in the need for fire detection systems in properties, so why not check out this fantastic range from this week's fire sponsor, Fire Angel. They'll keep watch over you and your loved ones even when you can't. Still on standards for renewable kit, it's been announced that NAPIT has achieved UCAS accreditation to deliver the redeveloped MCS installer scheme. The organisation says the development gives installers greater clarity as the redeveloped scheme is rolled out. NAPIT says it's working closely with MCS to develop a transition plan for existing MCS certified members. Until further notice, existing members should continue to meet all current MCS scheme requirements, including maintaining an approved consumer code. We'll share further details on the transition and key dates when we get them. A tradesman who suffered live life-changing burns after hitting a live cable in a Taco Bell outlet in Torquay has been awarded over £1 million in compensation. The incident happened when the Scottish national, who isn't being named, was digging up a concrete floor in the premises. He was part of a project team installing a disabled toilet at the fast food restaurant. His legal firm, Stewart's, says the live electrical cable was at a dangerously shallow depth. The company also says that it hadn't been identified or repositioned by the man's employer, Oakwood Contracts Limited. This was despite a near miss with the same cable on site in the weeks before the incident. On striking the cable, the man sustained an immense electric shock and was engulfed in flames. He sustained shocking burns covering 39% of his body, resulting in long-term scarring. His injuries reduced the use of his hands, affecting his work as a joiner and left him with skin conditions that impacted daily life. He's also developed post-traumatic stress disorder and depression as a consequence of the electric shock. Stewart's brought a claim against Oakwood Contracts Limited, alleging a failure to adhere to health and safety standards on site and failure to warn of the presence of the cable. The claim had been listed for a five-day trial in the High Court this March, but the disputing parties have now settled for what's being described as a seven-figure sum.
Still in the courts, a Bolton firm has been fined after a test certificate for a petrol station was conducted by an electrician unqualified to do the work. Bolton firm Derby Filec Limited was ordered to pay a penalty of £20,000 after its electrical work left the premises in a dangerous condition. Company director Mohammed Rafiq Patel carried out the work at Differing Garage on Anglesey, despite not having the appropriate qualifications. He claimed he'd submitted an electrical installation report, which stated that the electrical work was safe. However, that was not the case, and faults needed to be addressed, including the earthing of the installation. The alarm was sounded after the report contained a number of errors, as well as incomplete sections. It soon became clear that Patel had not been approved under his ECA membership to carry out electrical work in the hazardous area of a petrol station. Nor did he have Compex 7 and 8 competence in explosive atmospheres. Patel says he told the owners of the petrol station that his eligibility had expired and that he had not yet received the results of his last test but had failed to pass. Nevertheless, he went ahead and submitted a report even though the electrical grounding problem on the site had not been rectified. Patel told the court he regretted his actions and accepted he'd made a mistake. Councillor Nicola Roberts of Anglesey Council said she hoped the substantial fine would send a clear message that unsafe work practices would not be tolerated. On top of the £20,000 fine, Patel was also ordered to carry out 120 hours of unpaid community service and pay £778 in costs and a victim surcharge. We're told that he's since passed the tests and is now qualified to do this type of work. And if you're qualified and competent, why not check out Legrand's Green Eye range of smart controls? They'll cut carbon, reduce costs, and help you specify efficient, future-ready buildings. Our product focus today is on emergency lighting, and the big story here is a new surface version of the acclaimed Firefly family by Thorlux Lighting. This range comprises discrete, recessed emergency luminaires equipped with the latest lithium-ion phosphate batteries. There are five optical distribution options for illuminating points of emphasis, escape routes, and open areas. You can also get versions with the Thorlux SmartScan wireless control tech. The Firefly is available in either 3-watt or 4-watt power ratings, both of which come with a 10-year product warranty. It has an ingress protection rating of IP40 as standard with an IP65 version available. Firefly represents a 60% reduction in embodied carbon, reduced energy consumption and a doubled life expectancy compared to the previous model. As well as the surface, there's the Firefly recess, the recess with the IP65 bezel and the Firefly anti-ligature version. Now I was going to insert a clever pun involving a Firefly versus a mosquito for this week's challenge word here, but I ran out of time. Alpha ESS UK has become a certified partner of Octopus Energy. This means its full range of residential battery storage systems is integrated with intelligent tariffs from Octopus. Its kit is now compatible with Octopus Energy's intelligent flux tariff, and it also has built-in functionality that means it can work other dynamic tariffs, including Intelligent Go, Octopus Go and Cozy Octopus. Alpha ESS says the deal represents a great commercial opportunity for installers to get into battery packs. For householders, the combination of equipment and the Octopus apps will be compelling. It's expected to boost sales of Alpha ESS's acclaimed Smile G3 battery and inverter combination. This residential product comes in a range of ratings. There's single phase options ranging from 3.6 to 8 kilowatts and three phase ones from 4 up to 20 kilowatts. The modular design means you can install it building block style with plug and play connections to make it super easy. Easy. It has 200% array oversizing and you can connect a generator for dual power supply options. The Smile G3 is rated at IP65 so you can install it in outdoor and semi-outdoor locations according to the guidance. Our Learner of the Week slot is brought to you by Viperclip for rapid, secure and fireproof installations of cabling. And our Learner this week is Oliver Green of Milton Keynes College. Oliver is fortunate to be taught by some top lecturers there, including friends of the channel Tom Chaplin, Chris Game and Donna Ginger. Oliver has embraced LinkedIn to showcase his progress through his Level 2 Electrical Study programme. This gives him an invaluable opportunity to show potential employees the type of work he's undertaken during his training. And it also allows him to look back in the years to come and see how his skills have developed. All the best, Oliver. We look forward to more of your posts and all the best in getting an apprenticeship soon. Congratulations on being our eFix Learner of the Week in association with Viperclip. And now, to the lighter side of the electrical news. Yes, it's time for a tea break with Quickwire and its range of incredibly rapid electrical connectors. A Wrexham electrician has agonisingly missed out on a jackpot of £180,000 at the World Dart Championships in London. Curtis Griffiths was selected at random from almost 30,000 entrants in a sporting challenge organised by tournament sponsor Paddy Power. He was given the chance to win the cash if he was able to score 180 from nine darts on stage at Alexandra Palace. Unfortunately, Curtis scored just 89 from his nine darts, despite huge support from the 3,000-strong crowd. However, rather than walking away empty-handed, Paddy Power gave him five grand in the end for being a good sport. The initiative has raised more than £123,000 for Prostate Cancer UK. 
That's the lighter side of the news in our tea break with Quickwire and their range of incredibly rapid electrical connectors. Click the link in the description to check them out for yourself. And now, over to the John Motson of the electrical industry, it's Joe 2.0 with the latest roundup from our Fantasy Football League. Week 21 is over and out, bringing to an end the Premier League festive marathon of 40 matches in just 16 days. It's fair to say it delivered mixed fortunes across the EFIX Fantasy League. Some managers climbed to brand new heights, while others, myself included, quietly churned out bang average scores week after week. A true test of patience, squad depth and how much rotation pain you can tolerate. Let's get into the action. We kick things off with the Marshall Tuplex Team of the Week, which goes to fancy A55 name, Scott Temple. And no, I'm still not risking saying that out loud on YouTube. Scott played it perfectly this week, deploying his bench boost to rack up a brilliant 92 points, nearly double the game week average of 48. Differential picks like Harvey Barnes and Thiago delivered huge holes when it mattered most. Smart planning, brave picks and great execution. Well played, Scott. That's how you make chaos work in your favour. Next up, the Fusebox Flyer of the Week goes to Forest79. 8-0, Richie matching. Richie climbed 40 places up the table thanks to backing some excellent differential picks. A bold double up on the Brentford defence worked wonders, with both Collins and Kelleher scoring double digits. Brentford are in a real vein of form at the moment, not bad for a team that lost most of their star players in the summer and Rich's timing couldn't have been better. A quick shout out here to my dad Gordon, who put together a brilliant 72 point game week with some outstanding picks. Full transparency, I may have helped pick his team for him, and somehow it scored more than double what mine did. Clearly I should stop managing my team and just focus on his instead. Now for the EV Blocks Defence of the Week, which goes to Porrowed Time, Aaron Turner. He trusted those Brentford assets and combined them with a couple more clean sheets to pull in a massive 42 points from his defence alone. This season is proving that solid defences are just as valuable as explosive attackers. And Aaron looks like he's cracked the formula. Strong, steady and doing their job. Finally, it's time for the TIS transfer of the week. Looking at the fixture run, Arsenal stand out by a mile. They don't face another top four side for at least 10 game weeks. That makes their assets incredibly appealing. My top three will be Gabriel, Rice and Saka all reliable and capable of consistent returns. If you're feeling a bit braver and want to chase differentials, Chelsea have a strong short-term run coming up. And if the new manager can spark some form, Cole Palmer is definitely one to keep on the radar. That's the highlights from Game Week 21 in the EFIX Fantasy League. Huge thanks to our brand partners for backing the fun every single week. And don't forget to enter the draw for the NIFX Tool of the Week. The link's in the description. Until next time, may your captains actually play, may your benches be stacked, and may Leeds continue to disappoint Rick. Might need to change that outro. <laughs> Leeds are actually smashing it at the moment. Thanks for that update, Joe. Now, just before we get to your favourite bit of the show, where I reveal last week's challenge words and winners, we want to thank our premium partners. We couldn't make the news without you. First up, empowering their customers to harness power through light with their intelligent energy solutions, solar technology and advanced lighting systems, it's Leadvance. One of our favourite new innovations here at eFix for rock-solid fixings in flimsier materials, don't just fix it when you can chump fix it. And the best thing to come out of Yorkshire since stainless steel, the home of EV Ultra and other groundbreaking and quality products, it's Doncaster Cables. Click the links in the show notes to find out more about these great brands. If you think you know the words that I've smuggled into this week's show, pop your guess into the comments. We'll take all the correct guesses and select one at random to be the winner of an eFix goodie bag prize. Answers submitted after about lunchtime on the Thursday after release will not be entered into the draw. Now let's reveal the winners of last week's Challenge Word competition as sponsored by Brady. Remember, if you need a label, they've got a printer and so much more. Click the link in the description to view their incredible range. Last episode's words were Vixen and Prancer, and the first name to come out of our electronic hat was Mark Rose 9447 So well done to you, Mark. Click the link in the show notes to claim your prize. And also, well done for inputting variations of your name 9,446 times before you found a username that was available. That shows real tenacity. This week, we've been lit by Flex7 with their lightning-fast pre-wired modular lighting connection system that keeps your installation times razor sharp. Don't forget to click the links in the show notes to find out more. Thanks for listening to this episode of Electrical News Weekly in association with SunGrow, making every watt count, literally, since 1997. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. Thanks for listening, and until next time, have a great week. Stay safe out there, and remember, there's no such thing as a torque-calibrated arm.